Hey, it's Levi and welcome back. Today we're talking about flying flare for the very first time. So we're on our way from Calgary, Alberta to Abbotsford, BC to go visit some friends that we haven't seen in two years. The last time we made it out there, we drove and made it a week long camping trip. Of course, you can watch that video there. But this year, due to the insane gas prices, we decided to fly out. I figured out that it would cost roughly about $750 in gas just to get there and back. So after discovering this, I started shopping online for airline tickets, trying to kind of gauge how much that would cost. So this is when I discovered a new airline that I've never heard of before. It's called Flair. It's basically a budget airline and the prices were kind of like less than half of the major airlines. And that caught my attention. So I started looking into it a little bit further. The flights from Flair cost us $650 and that's for round trip for two tickets. However, that comes at a price. There's a few really important caveats to why their prices are so low. So the first caveat is baggage is not included. And at first they try to sell you a bundle, which is a check baggage and a carry on for one price. Kind of makes it weird because I wanted to just get a carry on and it wasn't initially offered to me to be able to do that. However, you can still book it that way if you'd like. You just need to decline their offer for the bundle to make that work. If you add luggage at any point later in the process, whether that's at check in or at the airport, you get charged more. So you want to arrange all this stuff right when you initially book. So that way, you know exactly kind of what your prices are. And that way you're hopefully not bill extra for that type of thing. All of their optional fees and charges are on their website. So if you want to check the actual numbers, they're all on there. So to summarize this point, the only way to have your prices being really low is to avoid paying for luggage. So that means you're gonna have to pack light. I packed this day pack, put my laptop and a couple essentials in, and this worked just fine. But there's very strict measurements that you have to adhere to. So make sure you look those up and confirm that your bag will actually fit and be accepted. So that way you're not unexpectedly charged extra. The second caveat is that seating costs extra. So if you want to sit next to the person that you booked with to really guarantee that you have to pay to reserve your seating, then it gets into the psychological pricing of a regular seat versus an emergency exit seat or an extra leg room seat, right? And it's not that much more expensive to get extra leg room if you're already reserving your seat. So that's something to keep in mind. And who knows, maybe if you don't reserve your seating, you might still get two seats right next to each other. But again, there's no guarantee unless you pay extra for it. So I went for the extra leg room. That was about $26 per seat per way. So that ends up being just over a hundred more dollars just to get the seats that we're looking for. You'd probably be dealing with something like that with probably any airline though. And caveat three is that checking in at the desk with the person actually costs you $25 per person each time you have to do it. So, so we chose to just check in with the app, which seemed to work okay. At the end of the day, we got to where we needed to go, which is good. So with five days to go before we depart, we booked our flights and away we go. Our departing flight was on a Monday morning at 6 a.m. Boarding was at 5.15. There was no problems whatsoever. It went really, really smoothly. Everything was totally on schedule. No issues there. In-flight refreshments were pretty pricey, so we didn't get any. Some airlines offer like a complimentary drink, but at the end of the day, their prices are higher, so you're paying for it one way or the other, whether you realize it or not. Now on the return flight, we got an email saying that the flight was delayed by 45 minutes. So we accounted for that. But in reality, the flight was late an hour and a half. So not our super big deal. We were pretty relieved to know that it's not delayed until midnight or until the next day. That means that we just basically got to chill at the airport. I ordered more beers and eventually we got on the flight. It all worked out just fine service. I believe you get what you pay for. If you're booking with a budget airline, you're going to get budget service. And that's just the way it is. We can't be expecting too much when we're paying bottom dollar for something. I think that Flair has found that bare minimum level of service that they can give to you to get you where you're going, but not really provide any extra hand holding or anything on top of that. When it comes to the amount of people I interacted with 
that were Flare staff. It was really only the boarding agents that were checking our boarding passes and IDs, and then the flight attendants that were checking that we had our seat belts on. Other than that, it was a pretty like contact-free experience. So I'm sure that they save a lot of money by not having uh, humans helping people out with every step of the process. The app, however, I've got to say it was a little bit glitchy and this led to kind of some increased stress and anxiety about what was going to happen. So after checking in on the app, we got emails that said, hey, we noticed that you haven't checked in yet. And that kind of freaked us out because we had known that we got checked in, we had seen the confirmation, and then we got an email saying that we hadn't. And we're like, did we do something wrong? Like what's going on here? Luckily, everything turned out okay. So it was just kind of like a false alarm, just a mix up, I suppose. But that was kind of weird. That made us a little bit nervous because we didn't want to miss the check-in and potentially miss the flight as a result. And the app also had made a mistake on showing the total of money I had spent on these flights. It was actually showing double. It was somewhere around $1,300. And I was like, what's going on here? I was quoted like 650. And why does it say like 1300 now? I was kind of freaked out about that. But luckily that was just another glitch and they didn't charge us twice. So for the entire round trip for two people was $650. Or that breaks down to about 160 per person each way, which I think is pretty convenient. That's pretty cheap in my world. Uh, I don't fly much though. I personally didn't have a bad experience with the service, but I read a lot of reviews and that sketched me out quite a bit. Um, luckily though, Things worked out for us just fine. So the entire time, I felt like I was kind of taking a gamble on this airline. I had no idea if flights were gonna get canceled or delayed or if any problems were gonna happen or if we might get hit with extra fees that we didn't see coming. I was pretty nervous kind of the whole time, kind of taking a chance on an airline that is fairly new and that I've never worked with before. However, things went okay despite that. So if I ever fly Flare again, I just gotta you know, learn to trust that they've got their stuff together. That level of uncertainty caused a bit of stress, but luckily it all worked out fine. So would I fly with Flair again? If I had to, yeah, I would definitely fly with Flair again. If I could afford a major airline, I'd probably spend the extra money if I had it and didn't mind spending it because of the level of service that you get being a little bit better. Um, however, you know, for what it's worth, um, we did okay with that Flair airline. Would I recommend Flair to a friend? Only if they know what they're getting into and that's why I'm making this video so you know what to expect if you're considering flying with Flair. Closing thoughts. Now all in all, traveling light like this actually made the trip really fun and interesting for me. I'm really guilty of wanting to bring all the comforts of home and all the camera equipment with me when I go traveling because I basically wanna be able to capture as much of it in as good of detail as I possibly can. But in this trip, that was not an option whatsoever. So I was limited to my day pack with my laptop. I had my phone for a camera and just the bare essentials for clothes and stuff like that. But you know, it, it turned out being good. It, it was totally all right. So for a short trip like this, minimal luggage, we did great. Having that weight limitation of how much we could bring actually made things kind of fun because I wasn't dragging around so much equipment on my back or rolling stuff behind me that is just extra baggage, extra weight that I don't really need on this trip. Now, if you've made it to this point in the video, thanks so much for watching. I appreciate it greatly. I will ask you to hit the like button. Thank you very much. Now, if you have any flight stories to share, please let me know in the comments. I look forward to reading people's comments, whether they're good or bad about different airlines, nightmare stories or great stories that they have had. It would be interesting to see it from you. And I encourage you to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell so you are notified of when my next video drops. And until then, catch you on the next one. Safe travels, everyone everyone.